our body needs steady supply of blood uh, to keep it working right and blood delivers oxygen to all the body cells and without oxygen the cell will die and if that oxygen rich blood doesn't circulate as it should be a person could die our topic today is about reviving heart and lungs which we call it CPR and CPR in full is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. This is a life-saving emergency procedure for reviving heart and lung function involving special physical techniques and often the use of electrical and mechanical equipment. How to recognize cardiac arrest is with unconscious casualty and not breathing and some will have agno breathing, convulsion, and confusion with epileptic seizure. Chest compression is delivered by effective rate, depth, duty cycle and position and also recoil of the chest. As I have said, this is a procedure performed on unconscious casualty who is not breathing and its objective is to supply the brain with oxygen till help is available. In order to maintain oxygen supply to the body, a person must be breathing and their heart must be pumping as well. If either any of these functions stops, the brain and any other vital organ will quickly deteriorate and the brain cell will start to die within four to six minutes unless urgent action is taken to circulate oxygen around the body. This will inevitably result to death. It is not dangerous to do CPR to someone who turns out to be conscious after all. The greater risk is that people mistaken a person's final gasp of breath as a sign of consciousness and then decide not to do CPR again. Where we call this breath agno respiration and this can mean they are dying in front of you. CPR it compromises of two things. The first one is artificial ventilation and the second one is chest compression. For artificial ventilation is literary breathing for the casualty till they can breathe on their own or until advanced help is available. And this artificial ventilation can be given through mouth to mouth or mouth to mouth and nose, especially for infants or mouth to nose where the mouth cannot be used or mouth to stoma for the neck breather who have a hole made surgically in the neck uh, to breathe through. Preventing a cross infection in this procedure carries the risk of transmitting diseases to the first aider and the casualty. This risk is reduced significantly by using protective gears like face mask and shield. Where they are unavailable and the aider is not willing to give ventilation with or without them, especially this time of COVID-19, then only chest compression should be given. And for the age variation, for the concept of artificial is basically the same in all ages. However, due to anatomical consideration, some alteration in the procedure do exist to ensure effectiveness with minimal injury to the casualty. And so for adults, ensure the airway is open, pinch nose firmly closed, take a deep breath and seal your lips around the casualty's mouth, blow into the mouth until the chest rises and then remove your mouth to allow the chest to fall. Give one ventilation every about five seconds. For children, ensure airway is open, seal lips around the child's mouth while pinching the nose, blow gently into lungs, looking along the chest as you breathe, take shallow breath and do not empty your lungs completely. As the chest rises, stop blowing and allow it to fall and do this at a rate of one breath every about four seconds. And for infant, Ensure the airway is open, seal your lips around the baby's mouth and nose, blow gently into the lungs, looking along the chest as you breathe, fill your cheeks with air and use this amount each time. As the chest rises, stop blowing and allow it to fall at a rate of one breath every two to three seconds. That's how we are supposed to give artificial ventilation. Let's now learn how to perform 
chest compression. Kneel by the casualty and put the heel of your hand on the middle of their chest. Ensure that pressure is not applied over the casualty's rib or ribs and do not apply pressure over the abdomen or bottom end of the breastbone. Put your hand on top of the first one and interlock your fingers, making sure they don't touch the ribs. Keep your arms straight and lean over the casualty. Press down to a depth of about 5 to 6 cm before releasing the pressure, allowing the chest to come back or recoil. Repeat the compression 30 times at a rate of uh, between 100 and 120 compression per minute. And if you are more than one, kindly change the compressor after every two or less minutes. The bits of song staying alive, or perhaps the song half a pound of two penny rice, can help you keep the right rate. That is if you know the songs. I'm still listening and following keenly for a Kenyan song, which I can use to help us with the right compression rate. But if you know one, please use it and share it with me as well. After 30 chest compression, you need to give two rescue breaths or artificial ventilation. To do this, open the airway by placing one hand on the forehead to tilt the head back and use two fingers from the other hand to lift the chin. Take the hand from the forehead and pinch the soft part of the nose closed and allow the mouth to fall open. With the head still tilted, take a deep breath in and place your mouth over the casualties forming a seal. Blow into their mouth for one second until the chest rises. Take your mouth away and watch the chest fall. If the chest doesn't rise, check if the airway is open and correct it if it is not open well or if there is something obstructing. If you are not trained or do not feel comfortable performing rescue breath, I'll say it again. Give continuous chest compression till help arrives or the casualty recovers or otherwise that I'll say later. This entails pressing the heart between the breastbone and the spine to expel blood and then giving it time to feel thus as a pump to ensure circulation of blood. This procedure, when accompanied by ventilation, ensures oxygenation of tissues till the casualty recovers or help arrives. And still, chest compression or hands-only CPR will still do good. This procedure is relatively safe to the aider but can cause serious injury and even death of the casualty if not done properly. Extreme caution is advised where rib fractures are suspected. Also for the chest uh, compression, there is also age variation thing. Again, due to anatomical consideration. A few differences exist for various age group and always remember, perform CPR on a firm surface. And for adult, Place heel of your hand in the center of the chest. Place other hand on top and interlock fingers. Lock your elbows to keep your arms straight and keep your finger off the chest. Compress about a third of the chest, that is around 2 inches to 2.5 inches. Then release the pressure, keeping your hand in place. At a steady rate of between 100 uh, compression, to 120 per minute. For children, place one or two hands in the center of the chest, depending on the size of the child. Use the heel of that hand with arms straight and press down at that the depth of the chest, that is about two inches, and perform 30 chest compression uh, at a rate of 100 or between 100 and 120 compressions per minute. For infant, place the baby on a firm surface, locate a position in the center of the chest, use two fingers, press down sharply at least one that uh, the depth of the chest, that is about uh, 1.5 inches, 
and do 30 uh, chest compression at a rate of 100 and 120 compressions per minute. Kindly note, where rescue breath is being applied, then you compress 30 times and give two rescue breath and then keep repeating the process. Keep alternating both chest compression and two rescue breath till help arrives or till the casualty recovers and other things that I will mention later. Although now there is research suggesting the breath might not even be needed at all, which I think is a good finding because it might encourage more people uh, to come to the aid of strangers in the street or even co-workers or anyone anywhere. This will be helpful, especially for an untrained uh, people so they can use hands only CPR or chest compression only for adults. Though in children under the age of around 12 years, it's still recommended to breathe uh, into their mouth because their problem normally arises from uh, respiratory rather than cardiac problem. And if you apply chest compression only or hands only CPR, then continue until help arrives or till what I will state here in a while uh, on when to, you are supposed to stop CPR. But as much now that we have hands on CPR without giving rescue breath, it is still important to know that. As I said earlier uh, about children, we must continue 30 chest compression and two rescue breath for infants, children, uh, drowning, uh, drowning victims, drug overdose, and casualty who have collapsed due to breathing problem. And also note that CPR is always, I repeat, this is always done on a hard surface for effective results. And remember, your hands become their heart and each chest compression uh, becomes their heartbeat. If your casualty has an ICD or a pacemaker, still just continue with chest compression. It is important to recognize that someone in cardiac arrest is either dead or will be dead unless you intervene, even, even if they underwent heart surgery recently. Because if you don't intervene, the uh, alternative result uh, will be death. And we don't want that. Rather, I believe you don't want that. On detecting that the casualty is not breathing during initial assessment, give 30 chest compression, then to rescue breath. If alone, repeat this cycle three times, then go for help. Continue resuscitation. 30 chest compression and 2 rescue breath. And if you have someone with you, send them to call for an ambulance after confirming that casualty is not breathing. I insist, if you are alone, make a call and use hand-free speaker on a phone so you can start CPR while speaking to ambulance control. Do not leave the casualty to look for a defibrillator yourself. Send someone or call someone. If you are too exhausted to continue and there is a helper, you can change over every one to two minutes with minimal interruption to chest compression. If the helper returns with the defibrillator, ask them to switch it on, follow the voice prompt while you continue with CPR. If the casualty shows signs of becoming responsive, such as coffee, opening eyes uh, and start breathing normally, put them into recovery position, monitor their level of response and prepare to give CPR again if necessary. And if you have used defibrillator, leave it attached. As well, you might use it again. When do we need to stop performing CPR? I'll say do not CPR until or unless you see signs of life until EMS professional takes over, until you are too exhausted to carry on, or until an AED becomes available, and until the scene becomes unsafe. 
Note that when dealing with a child or an infant and you don't know their sequence but you are familiar with adult CPR and completely you have no idea of child-infant CPR, just use the adult sequence. We now go through cardiac arrest chain of survival. Uh, and it is well recognized that initiating the chain of survival improves outcome and leads to more people surviving cardiac arrest. It is estimated that a big percent of sudden cardiac arrest casualties die before reaching to hospital. However, when all four links of chain of survival are strong, survival rate for casualties of cardiac or sudden cardiac arrest can rise to as high as 40%. By understanding more about sudden cardiac arrest and the importance of the chain of survival concept, you may be able to save the life of a family member, uh, a neighbor, a co-worker, or even a friend. Basic CPR is unlikely to restart a heart that has stopped beating but it does help keep blood flowing to the brain. Rather, CPR is to get oxygen into person's lung to prevent brain damage and it helps keep that uh, functioning so that when a defibrillator is used, hopefully the heart will start or the heart will restart. This is why it is essential not to give up on CPR until medical help arrives. For CPR to be effective, it needs to be done hard and fast and most of the time, the aider tires out quickly. So you need to position yourself where you can continue this for a long time or you can take turns with someone else if you're not alone. But if your casualty doesn't immediately come back to life, it doesn't mean you're not or it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It's just rare for CPR casualty to rouse from unconsciousness straight away. And if someone without a pulse appears to recover and regain a pulse through CPR, then the chances are that their heart was still beating faintly all along. But I believe in miracle and miracles do happen. Although the changes that have been made are fairly minimal from a first aid point of view, emphasis has been made on ensuring that good quality chest compression are achieved in order to minimize the time spent without blood flowing around the body. The four links in the chain of survivals are one is early recognition and call for help. Recognize signs of cardiovascular emergency like a heart attack, cardiac arrest, stroke, and call for help immediately. The aim here is to prevent cardiac arrest and its complication. The second link is early CPR. Keep the brain and the heart perfused till specialized care is available. The aim here is to buy time till help arrives. The third link is early defibrillation. Use a defibrillator to restore the heart normal rhythm or use an AED or what we call automated external defibrillator if available. Modern ambulance has defibrillators nowadays and the aim on this point is to coordinate the myocardial electrical activity. The last link in chain of survival is early advanced care which is given by qualified paramedic like ambulance crew or other health personnel who reach the casualty within shortest time possible with advanced equipment and medication needed. And the aim here is to restore quality of life. We are stressing the importance of the public to take CPR classes if not the full first aid course. Because if there is a bystander who recognizes the emergency and is ready, are willing, confident, and able to act, they can triple survival rates if they begin immediate CPR. The most common reason people die from cardiac arrest is because no one nearby the casualty who knew how to perform CPR or if there was someone with the knowledge and skill, then they didn't actually do it. I request you to get trained, know it, and save lives. Because emergencies don't come with a notice. I repeat, 
emergencies don't come with a notice. Kwaheri.